when we were living here in Los Angeles and Upendra was serving Prabhupada, he was cooking for him daily and was going to leave and be, you know, go off traveling with him to be his servant. Um, Prabhupada, Upendra was in his room one day and Prabhupada took a $20 bill and handed it to Upendra to, he said, this is for your children. And Upendra right away, you know, responded, oh Prabhupada, we can't take this from you. You're our spiritual master, we should be giving to you. You know, and Prabhupada said, no, this is for your children. I'm not their spiritual master. They will have to take their own. You know? So it was, um, right away, Upendra brought the $20 bill home and it was, uh, you know, we just knew right away at that point, you know, Prabhupada was telling us he, he wasn't going to be on the planet for our children to take initiation from. That that was going to be something that they they were going to have to seek out their spiritual master and take initiation on their own. You know, that it wasn't an automatic given that all of our children would be the disciples of Prabhupada. One time I remember talking about how light and gentle Srila Prabhupada's body was, but one time I remember massaging Srila Prabhupada and sometimes his body would seem heavier than the heaviest. I was massaging and Prabhupada turned and said, harder, and I started massaging harder. Prabhupada said, harder, I turned to massage harder. Prabhupada stopped me and looked at me, turned around and said, do you know what hard means? <laughs> Later on, I worked with the famous road show <laughs> with the Radha Damodar. And uh, anyways, uh, we got to marketing the road show. This was in 72. It was a little bit, we were on thin ice, we thought at the time, with uh, the music. Srila Prabhupada listened to the music. He liked it. He actually later on went to a, a large performance we had in Pittsburgh, and he liked it. Um, gave a lecture there, but uh, early on uh, I was asked to show Srila Prabhupada the advertising material we had. So I was engaging uh, ISKCON artists and I saw the cover of the Srimad Bhagavatam recently completed by Murli Dar, which was a remake of Srila Prabhupada's original one that he had done in Delhi back in who knows when, 64 or something. And the ones that Srila Prabhupada brought. So it was a remake. And uh, so this poster was largely in utilizing that art. And I said, so Srila Prabhupada, this actually was your idea, pointing to the fact that Srila Prabhupada had designed the cover of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And he looked at me like, nice try. Like you're trying to, you know, it was your idea. It's right. The disciple is trying to flatter. And he just looked at me like pitiful. And he says, what my idea? It is all in Shastra. So Srila Prabhupada would never go from that for that. We were in the room. I was there with, uh, I, I forget who else was there. It was just maybe another person with me. I know there's one other person. And then uh, Krishna Das came in with his wife. And uh, I don't really know what reminded me of this, but he came in with his wife, and he'd been in Sweden trying to open the temple. And he had a wife and a, and a little son. And um, so they came in and they were telling Prabhupada, basically explaining. We'd been in there talking to Prabhupada and then he came in, he'd just come in and arrive. He was basically explaining to Prabhupada why he hadn't been able to stay in Sweden. And um, I was in there, was another brahmachari with me and we kind of looked at each other because his wife had come in wearing a sweater that was a rather tight-fitting sweater. You know, for us, it's like, really, it seems, it's not really appropriate. You're coming for the guru, you know. You should wear a sari and, and so forth, dress modestly, you know. And so, you know, it just seemed a little... And, and then Krishna also was kind of making these... Prabhupada was pushing him a little bit. And, but, you know, he was kind of making what seemed to us kind of excuses, right? And so after he gave his spiel, Prabhupada was listening and so forth. And, and he was all done. And I didn't know, I have any idea how Prabhupada would, would respond, of course, you never do. And uh, Prabhupada looked at him kind of, you know, thoughtfully and said, <laughs> he simply said, 
his name was Krishna Das, as I said, he goes, you are not Krishna Das, you are Maya Das, you know? And it's like, Phew. You know? <laughs> And it kind of fit, there was his wife, you know, and, and he, and Prabhupada said, he goes, he goes, when I came to your country, he goes, there was no question of peaceful retreat. He goes, it was victory or death. You know, really, like, hammering him, you know? And we're like, wow. And, you know, Krishna Das is kind of like, you know, Kind of see him getting smaller, you know. <laughs> Honey, I shrunk the kids, you know. He's getting smaller, and then uh, then probably kind of lightened up, and and you know, at the end, he said, "Can I have my son touch your feet?" Probably said, "Yeah, sure." So he he did that, and he left the room. But it was a you know obviously a lesson to us that probably was not that pleased when we rationalized things. You know, it would have been better just to say, "I really couldn't cut it," you know, and, and so forth. At the same time, when he was. Um, serving Prabhupada, he was outside Prabhupada's door, he was uh, waiting to hear if the bell was going to ring for him. And he was talking to other devotees out there. And Prabhupada rang the bell, called him in. He says, Who are you talking to? He says, I'm talking to the devotees out there, the devotees, Prabhupada. He says, he says, what are you talking about? He says, Oh, just talking about the other things, other devotees. and." He says, that is gossip. He said, gossip will destroy this movement. Another time I remember, same thing happened with a, a dance expert in Madras. And that time we had this Fairchild movie thing, and it showed Prabhupada speaking. So we used to turn that thing around and throw it on the wall. <laughs> And there's a lot of dance students there, and his name is Dhananjay. He's a very good dancer himself, his wife also. So he looked at him, then he said, can you replay this for me? So I was replaying, and again he wanted it to be replayed. And then he was explaining Prabhupada's class in terms of Bharatanatyam to his students. <laughs> and it was a very intent class. Prabhupada was speaking about how the power of devotion and the chanting of the holy name, if somebody is chanting the name, he has already performed all the sacrifices and tapas, everything in his previous life. And Prabhupada was very intent speaking in that. His face was changing, his moods were changing like every two minutes. And he was sometimes like very jubilant, sometimes like, like frustrated that people are not taking to it. And, and he, it, was like a, it was like a dance program. <laughs> except that he was not moving his limbs and uh, he was making mudras while he was speaking and like this so he would he would stop and then he would say see you know and then he was quoting from uh, the nitya shastra of bharat and saying that these are the different ecstasies that we are learning in theory and you see and he said that in 28 minutes he said this gentleman went through all that <laughs> And then we played it again, and he went again explaining that. I took notes of that. And later when, when I compared with Nectar of Devotion, it was like, you know, three, four uh, subheadings of the Nectar of Devotion, all uh, experienced by Prabhupada in explaining philosophy of just chanting the holy name. It was not Rasa Leela, or it was not intimate pastime, or... It was, it was nothing of that sort. It was simply about how one should take to the chanting of the Holy Name and what happens when one takes the chanting of the Holy Name. And it looked like, uh, you know, preliminary preaching, but uh, in explaining that, Prabhupada's body went through the whole ecstasy of that. So he was saying that, then when he finished that, I said, there is a famous verse in the Brahma Samhita that every word is a song and then every movement is a dance. And this man took it so serious that in his concerts, he has that verse sung in the, in the first. When he starts the invocation, he has that kathaganam gamanam natyam verse first. And then with that, he starts the invocation. <coughs> so it's, this is how, like these are play, uh, areas where people are inspired, you know, some, from an Arya Samaji to a Gaudiya Mar Maharaj. And we know how he has inspired the movement, but this is how he has inspired others.